Now, how easy is it to eat tasty food that is satisfying and also nurtures our longevity? Well, just inside here is the restaurant at the medical spa Clinique La Prairie in Montreux, Switzerland. And I'm about to meet the chef whose job it is to create a menu that puts our well-being first. As a French chef, I used to use a lot of butter and cream uh, in, my, in my old uh, restaurant. But now I have to work with different fat instead of butter. This episode is brought to you in association with Clinique La Prairie, the award-winning spa clinic and pioneering health and wellness destination nestled on the shores of Lake Geneva in Montreux, Switzerland. Combining preventative medicine with bespoke lifestyle and nutrition plans, Clinique La Prairie offers a holistic approach to living fuller, healthier and longer lives. David Alessandria, welcome to the Live Long and Master Aging podcast. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for uh, inviting us into your restaurant, yes. your kitchen as well. How big a challenge is it for you to keep the dishes so healthy with our well-being in mind? The hardest thing is to um, adapt gastronomy, basically, with all the standards of uh, dietetic in the clinic. It was really the hardest part for me to, to adapt myself with my basic brand about uh, gastronomy, what is gastronomy. And just tell us a little bit then about your background, uh, w what you've come from to do this job. What, what's your career been like so far? So I started uh, basically in a catering, catering school in France uh, at uh, 16 uh, years old. Uh, after my four years in this catering school uh, with my bachelor, I started to work in Michelin star in uh, Luxembourg in uh, Belgium. Then I came back uh, in my, uh, my, my city, so uh, I was born in Chambéry, in Savoie. And after that, uh, I was lucky, I started to, to, to work in Switzerland, uh, in also uh, the, the famous EHL school um, in, uh, in Lausanne, then in Glion. So Glion is just up to Montreux, up to La Prairie. And uh, after these 10 years in Switzerland, uh, I like to change basically to change my mind uh, my wife is vegan my children are vegetarian so i think about what i can do better uh, in gastronomy and i think in the clinic we do we do it better so your wife and your children have particular uh, culinary needs what about you do you have any particular uh, regimes that you follow mm, not at all but i reduce a lot uh, the animal proteins uh, since basically I started here but a, a bit a bit earlier so since two years basically now I eat I think two times a week uh, meat and that's it no no more no more but eggs every day because we need uh, protein this uh, this energy uh, and I love eggs I've got some chickens at home so oh, have it's you? good yes right oh that's good that's good so you you've got your own fresh eggs yes yeah excellent let's talk about meat then because meat is key for a lot of people in terms of reduction of especially red meat yes some people prefer and I myself included more fish than than red meat yes what is the theory behind that as a as a chef clearly you like serving a wide range of foods but why do you restrict the amount of red meat that you use? Uh, Anti-inflammatory. Uh, this type of protein give inflammation. If you remove that, it's better for you, for your health. Chicken is okay, but again, not every day. Uh, and we do it a la, a la clinic, just for lunch, meat protein, and then in the evening, it's only vegan. We have to remove these bad habits also for the planet. I'm curious about the challenge that you face as, as a chef to still make food that is very, very tasty and, and that people want to eat and that satisfies people, that they feel as if they've had enough food for their needs. Wh where do you start when you're, when you're planning a menu in terms of, of balancing protein, animal protein, and protein that we can get from vegetables? Uh, first of all, we have to follow the season. This is the most important to get the best product at the best moment. This is the first thing. Then, uh, to extract the taste, the, the flavor of each product, uh, we make a lot of uh, extraction, concentration. Uh, basically, we do the same process uh, for meat, but with vegetables. Uh, you can make a nice stock with uh, celery or carrots or beetroot, and the concentration will be a bit similar as a veal juice, basically. The looking 
of the taste, of course, but the looking. And this way, you can have a lot of, uh, of palette, like uh, like a painter, you know, uh, to make a new taste and new new creation. And does the I'm curious, does the variety of food that you serve on a plate, does that have any bearing on how satisfied someone feels at the end of the meal? Because I've noticed eating your meals all week, all being delicious. Are you satisfied? Yes, <laughs> yes. well, that, that's the point. I'm, yes. I'm very satisfied with relatively small helpings. Yes. Is there a secret to achieving that? No, there, there is no secret, but I think the, the, the appearance is really important. Uh, you forget the vegan part and the vegetarian part if it's appealing like that. That's my opinion, and I think it works. Uh, so this is one of the secret, if you can tell uh, that's a secret. But then the taste is really important, of course. Do you use much dairy in your cooking? No. Also, we remove all the dairy products. Uh, as a French chef, I used to use a lot of butter and cream uh, in, my, in my old uh, restaurant. But now I have to work with different fat uh, instead of butter. Uh, but again, we reduce a lot the quantity of fat inside and we do only with concentration. So animal protein, dairy products uh, are not allowed in, in, my, in my kitchen. This must have been quite a, a learning process for you. Yes. Coming from your background, as, as you say, as, as, a, as a chef of, of, of French food. Yes. Um, it's quite a, a change, isn't it? It's a big change, uh, also with gluten. Uh, in pastry, w if you remove the gluten, it's really hard to make recipes. We don't speak about sugar. It's uh, the hardest part to make desserts, to make sorbet. That's why we have to take the best product at the best moment. If you make a mango sorbet, if you do it at the best moment in January, February, the sorbet will be perfect because the percentage of fructose into the mango is at the best point. So. If you do it in summer, it will be horrible because it's not the season. I'm glad you mentioned sugar because I wanted to get on to sugar because I think it is for many people the most difficult thing, uh, maybe with the exception of alcohol or coffee, but yeah. sugar is one of the most difficult things to give up. And not only is it difficult to give up because of that sweet taste that people mm -hmm. like, but a lack of knowledge of how to take sugar out of your diet. Uh, many people feel as if it it is there and it has to be there, it has to be part of the recipe and it's actually quite difficult to make tasty food without yes. that sweet taste. We, we did a taste uh, since a few months ago to make uh, just a, a creme caramel but without caramel, without sugar and of course the taste is horrible, totally horrible because you use uh, mi uh, almond milk, no sugar uh, but we adapt ourselves and we make uh, uh, basically uh, uh, a caramel with that or, or prune, plum, and uh, at the end you can get the sugar just from the, ve the, the, the fruit or vegetable also, uh, but we don't add it uh, sugar. We just use natural sugar. If you make a compote with uh, apples, uh, you can get some sugar also with pears, with a lot of things. And of course, not all foods, not all fruits and, and vegetables are equal. For example, orange juice is yes. actually quite, quite high in sugar, yes. whereas uh, a carrot juice may be slightly less and a vegetable juice even less. Also. So you've got to be careful, haven't you, in terms of, uh, let's say, breakfast time. The balancing, the yeah. balancing between everything. And normally, I'm not allowed to, to add fruit also in the, in the starter, for example. So sometimes I just put some touch of, uh, of fruits. Uh, you get for lunch some uh, slices of uh, orange with uh, the scallops, uh, but ju just to add uh, a touch of it to enhance the flavor also, but not to, to add sugar. <laughs> Let's talk about the stomach, which ultimately is what all of this is about. We all know now, and I think we're becoming increasingly familiar with the idea that our stomach is, is full of bacteria. Yes. It's full of little bugs yes. that are, are vitally important for our metabolism and general well-being. As a chef, do you think about that? Is that relevant to you designing a menu? Not before CLP, but now, yes, I think about it. It's like a car, basically, if you don't put benzene inside, it doesn't work. So it's the same for us. Uh, you, you have to get the, the good product for your health. It's not only red meat, it's not all the animals with uh, four legs, this type of protein. So pork, beef, veal, uh, all these type of meat. So I remove totally uh, meat at home. To do the same for, for me and for my last children. Uh, we he loves meat, 
uh, but only chicken. We give only chickens. White meat, it's, it's, it's easier to digest. And what about fish? You serve quite a lot of fish in yes. this restaurant. I think it's, it's just a question of protein. Where do you get your fish from? Because that's significant, isn't it? Especially if you're serving salmon, for example. Yes. Whether it's freshwater salmon, whether d depending on the location that the salmon has, has grown in. So that can have an impact on how healthy it is. Yes, we, uh, again, we work with the season. Uh, we, you, you tried the, ma the mackerel this week? I did. Yes, so the mackerel is the best season. Uh, April, May is the best season. After that, the, the sea be becomes the uh, hottest and the quality of the fish will be bad. Uh, so for the mackerel, it's a poor fish, but by definition, it's uh, full of uh, good things for health. Uh, it's a blue fish, uh, like, uh, like tuna, uh, and the taste is amazing. So that's why we get it. Uh, we used to work also with uh, the fish from the lake, from Geneva Lake, uh, but uh, it's become uh, less and less uh, because of uh, the pollution and the, the weather. And for, for the salmon you, 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 you spoke, we come from uh, not far away, uh, from Switzerland, far, from a farm. Uh, so we do our best to take local products, but the sea is not uh, close to here. So of course for the sea fish and mollusk and crustacea, we have to work with, uh, with Brittany. Let me ask you more generally uh, about your observations of people's dietary needs and tastes and how they are evolving. Clearly you've evolved as a chef from your previous life cooking French food to what you do now. What are your observations more generally when you get diners in your restaurant with their particular needs and, and desires and uh, maybe sometimes you, you can't provide them with what they have traditionally eaten because of the, mm -hmm. the healthy nature of the food that you're serving. But are you seeing any trends? Vegan is a trend by, by definition, but we have to, I think, go ahead uh, that and think about the future. Uh, for our children, the global impact on the environment, uh, and then it will be the same for us, basically. Uh, when you explain the thing to the people, they, they understand globally uh, why uh, and the target and the goal of it. Uh, it's why people come to Selpe, I think. It's a way of life, it's a passion. If you're passionate about what you're doing, it's, it becomes easier. So uh, feed ourselves is really important. It's uh, three times a day minimum. So if you do it better, that's better for you. And what do you think about the state of the world in, in terms of food that is provided for people? Now, clearly different countries, some nations and, and peoples of nations have, uh, are suffering from hunger at the moment. The kind of food that people in, eat in the Western world, when you look at most diets of most people, which can lead to ill health, do you see things getting worse or getting better? Sometimes I pray to, to get better, but I'm not sure about uh, the industrial part. Uh, if you see uh, every big, big uh, um, uh, brand make vegan food, but if you check the, the recipes on it, it's horrible. A lot of uh, sorbitol, added sugar inside. Uh, so it's vegan, but it's really bad for the health. So uh, if we speak about vegan steak, it's better to do it by itself uh, with uh, chickpeas or with uh, quinoa or something else, but do it by itself, it's, is, it's better than buy it uh, in, the, in the market. So industrial part is, uh, for me, the enemy is uh, about, about health. That's, again, my uh, personal opinion. So what you're talking about is essentially processed vegan or vegetarian food that is, in some cases, made to look like meat. It's made to look like sausage or a, or this a burger? Is, this is a trend, I think. Uh, if I take the example of my wife, uh, three weeks ago she bought a vegan steak with the lo looking of a steak, but when she tried it, uh, she just uh, no, no, vomit throughout because uh, the texture reminds her, the texture of the meat, and for her it's, uh, it's impossible to eat. So that's for me a trend to copy, copycat and to make similar products. If you don't eat meat, you can't eat vegan sausage. Uh, it's, uh, it sounds wrong. And processed food, more generally, is often cited as one of the, the great ills of our time, that people are, are eating far too much processed food as opposed to the, the fresh food yes. that you serve. Yes. Is that a big problem, do you think? We have to take time to, to cook, basically. 
if you just buy uh, processed food, you don't think about you, basically. That's, that's sure. Uh, we have to remove a bit the mobile phone, the application, and take uh, 30 minutes to just to cook. It's not, it's not too long at the end. The longest thing is to, uh, if you think about in advance, you can prepare the menu for the whole week, basically. You make uh, two times the market, and then you cook. Uh, 30 minutes a day is enough. Well, let's get some tips from you then, in, in terms of uh, someone who's leading a very busy lifestyle, who wants to, to plan those meals for the week. Yes. And clearly, at their disposal, they don't have the range of foods that you have in a, in a restaurant like this. But what advice would you give to someone who wants to eat as, as healthy as they can, perhaps someone who's even eaten in a restaurant like this, which is focused on well-being, and want to take that with them as they go home around the world? What sort of tips could you give them? I usually they ask for the recipes, so I give the technical sheet of the recipes. Uh, and when they start to read, they say, but I can't do this at home. But I say, yes, yes you, you follow, you, you remember what you, you tried, and just, just practice. Practice is the best thing. If you practice, you won't fail. Uh, it's the same for me. Huh? I practice a lot. You can be a, a better father every day because of your practicing. So that's the same for, for the, the healthy cooking. Can you give me a, a glimpse into your lifestyle? Clearly, you, you've learned a lot through moving into this area of, of cooking. But when you're at home, when you're preparing food uh, and planning the week, do you have a, a routine? Yes. Every Sunday, uh, we make a, a nice omelette. Uh, because uh, after three, three, four days of eggs, basically, uh, my wife says, stop, stop, the, stop the eggs. <laughs> That's enough. Uh, so we basically don't eat eggs uh, on Friday and Saturday, but then on Sunday uh, we make a big omelette. So usually a big omelette with a nice salad with some, uh, some, uh, some nuts, uh, some, uh, and lemon, I love lemon uh, also inside. Uh, that's uh, the, the thing we do basically, not, not weekly, but almost, almost. And there is there a, a good dish that you could suggest that could be made, say, on a Sunday or, or on a weekend, that is going to last a, a few days, that uh, if, if someone wants to be economic with their time and, yeah. uh, and, and very little time during the week. What would you but You suggest? can make a nice uh, chickpeas uh, couscous style, basically, without lamb, of course. And then uh, if you've got some rest, you can just mix it to make a, a hummus. Uh, it's, a, it's a way to optimize, basically, uh, your time and your money because you make one product and then you can use it uh, for two or three days uh, easily. Chickpeas is one of the best uh, for that. One of the best. You've got edamame, you've got all the beans also are really nice. And then to digest it easily, uh, the tips or advice is to leave them uh, 24 hours in the water, first of all, to remove the lectin. The lectin gives the, the bad parts uh, in your digestion. Uh, so 24 hours of uh, just in the water, we will remove the lectin. And the second tip is if you can cook it in a, a high pressure uh, cocotte, marmite, you remove 99% of the lectin. And this way, the digestion will be uh, perfect. Most of the time for the, for, for, for the guest here is, is that uh, after one day of chickpeas, one day of uh, beans, one day of uh, edamame, uh, we have to stop. Uh, my stomach is <laughs> crying. That, that's normal. Yeah. But uh, at home, cook it with a high pressure. Without lectin, it will be perfect. While I've been here, I've talked to quite a few of the other experts in, in different areas about the subject of sleep and yes. how food affects our sleep. What are your experiences in terms of the kinds of food that we eat later in the day and how they affect our sleep? The vegan one. I think it's due to the, the meat protein, the animal protein. That's why we serve only vegan protein in the evening. We make the appearance nicely and uh, pretty, uh, I think. You uh, do? Yes. Yes, it always looks pretty. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank but you. It, but so you've put some thought into the fact that two or three hours later, people are going to try to go to sleep. Yes. That's interesting. So yeah. th th as you say, it's, it's vegan protein yes. um, as opposed to animal protein, which could keep us awake longer? I think so. Not too heavy, of course. That's it, I, th I think, yeah. I think. So we've talked a lot about food. What about drink? You serve some interesting, you, no alcohol. No alcohol. People here. It's forbidden. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's forbidden. So what sort of alternatives have you come up with? 
how we make kombucha, we make fer fermented uh, drinks, and we use it also in the kitchen, uh, in the vinaigrette, in the recipes, uh, in the reduction, or uh, everything. What's the science behind that? The science is just to transform, uh, for the kombucha, you transform the, the tea, basically we make a tea, we, a black tea, with the, the scooby. Scooby is a combination of bacteria and, uh, and yeast, and you, trans you transform the sugar from the, the tea into uh, gas carbonic. Yes. Uh, so basically it becomes a, a bit uh, sparkling, uh, and it's, it's, it's a probiotic, it's really good for, for, the, for the stomach and for digestion. So we, we do our own uh, kombucha in the, in the kitchen. Let me ask you in closing, everything here is focused on longevity. It's, it's yes. focused on living a long, healthy life with the emphasis on healthy. From your own perspective, is that something you think about? Do you have aspirations for the future in terms of your own personal health? And is there something that you do every day with I, that in mind? I try my best to practice uh, every day, but uh, bad habits. Uh, it's the same for everybody. I think when, when, when guests leave the CLP, after a week or two weeks, the bad habits, the, the bad habits come back. Uh, we have to fight every day with our uh, devil, I think. Uh, so I try my best to, to practice at home with my wife, with my, uh, my children, with my parents also, to live a better life, of course, and to live longer. Cross fingers again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We never know, we never know. We never know, but it's, it's a great aspiration. David, it's been really good talking to you. Thank you so much and thank you for the wonderful food this week. Thank you, Peter. That's a pleasure.